and welcome back Emily Jean if you're new here and today I'm doing the 90s kid book tag <laughs> I've seen this floating around and I'm so excited to uh, go through some beautiful 90s nostalgic moments with you and connect them to some bookish questions so if you want to hang out grab your coffee grab your tea and let's get cozy <music> Okay, so I was trying to hunt down whose video I first saw this in, and I couldn't. I like scoured my history. I do not remember how this came across. So I'm so sorry if it was your video, let me know in the comments. But I did track this down as a written form in a blog, and this is the 90s kid book tag. So we have 12 or 13 90s prompts connected to books. So we remember like a nostalgic thing, and then we chat about a book in connection to it. It was originally created by Amber with the Literary Phoenix in 2018, so I'll link her um, blog below with all the questions and everything, and let's get started. Okay, so the first one is Pokemon. <laughs> I was never like a huge Pokemon fan, but of course you're around it and you know what it is. So um, the Pokemon prompt is the author that you need every book from, because the idea is like you collect the Pokemon, you gotta collect the books, right? So I could not narrow it down to just one. I have Christopher Moore. I have almost all of his books, but there are a few that came out since I was really into him that I don't have copies of that I read through the library. So I would like to get those, but Christopher Moore is one of those authors who just writes such good stories. These books make me laugh out loud multiple times, and that doesn't happen for me very often at all. Maybe once in a book, but they're funny and they're poignant and they're creative, so I could not recommend him more highly. Christopher Moore, I would say start with The Lust Lizard of Melancholy Cove. That was the first book I ever read of his and it hooked me in and I actually don't have a copy of it. <laughs> but I would recommend that one first if you're totally new to Christopher Moore. And then I also can never resist picking up any of Patricia Briggs' new books, especially her Mercy Thompson series. If you don't know Mercy Thompson and you're a fan of like, um, werewolves and fae. Oh my gosh, please check out the Mercy Thompson series. It is so good and there are so many books in the series now. They're quick reads, they're fun reads, um, and I love Patricia Briggs. I got to meet her once. Uh, she was doing a book tour, I think for, I forget which book it was, um, and she was just so nice and down to earth too. So I always pick up any of Patricia Biggs' new books in the Mercy Thompson series. And then most recently this year, I fell in love with a new author, L.L. Frost. She writes reverse harem um, fae stories, demon stories, <laughs> but so lighthearted, so joyful. The characters she builds are so beautiful and she has this series called the Unlucky Succubus series. I've talked about it a few times on my channel, but I pick up every book that's next in that series because I adore Addie. I adore the Unlucky Succubus, the whole demon world, how they're merging their reality with the human world, and it's just a great series. She actually sent me some book merch, um, and I have my little Addie card. So sweet. I joined her Patreon um, and this is Adeline Bupon. This is the character card. She's a succubus. I've mentioned it, so I won't go into too much. So this is a little character card of Adeline Bupon. Isn't this so cute? And I got some stickers, and I actually got one of the paperback cereals. So she releases them in cereal format, but then you can get the full book. Oops! So she sent me a little thank you card and some stickers, too. One bite is never enough. That's kind of like the motto of Addie's cupcake store. So those are the three authors that I need every book from. Christopher Moore, Patricia Briggs, and L.L. Frost. I'm sure there's a bunch more, <laughs> but those are the three I chose for today. Okay, on to the next one. AIM. AIM, AIM, whatever you called it, it was our first, as a 90s kid, our first look into social 
networking, I like into talking to people who were complete strangers on a computer. I very vividly remember my first time sitting down on a computer and talking to somebody from another country and my mind was being blown. I know I'm aging myself right now, but if you're a nineties kid, you get it. It was just mind blowing. Like we are the only generation left who grew up without the internet and then still experience the internet from a young age. So it never felt like something we were having to catch up with, right? It was just kind of part of our growing up. And I think that's important for us to recognize. But anyways, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> so for AIM, the book prompt is a book that connected you with your best friend. And honestly, the first thing that came to mind was my friend Faye's book that she wrote called under toe and we did NaNoWriMo in 2012 together and we both wrote well it was my first book but it was Faye's like I don't know she was writing books when she was like 12 <laughs> but I really remember the joy of writing with a friend she was living in Alaska and I was living in Maine and sharing our word counts and going through that experience like this really connected to me me to her in a totally different way we've been friends since third grade but it was just fun to go through that experience and it was really like her story still sticks with me to this day. It was called Undertow. I don't think she got that published. I remember her sharing her first rejection letter and she was so excited to share it. Just like that accomplishment of getting your work out there and submitting it. So I'm going to say my friend Faye's book, Undertow, really meant a lot to me and connected me with a, a really close friend. Okay, the next 90s nostalgia is Furby. <laughs> So Furby, the prompt is a book that seemed like a good idea, but was actually a monster. <laughs> I don't have a lot of these, honestly. Um, the closest one that I could think of is my most recent DNF, which is The Poison Heart by Kaylin Byron. Byron. Um, I just didn't dig it. It was not what I expected it to be at all. I was super disappointed. I'm going to talk about it more in my next video, Recent Reads, so I won't go too much in depth, but... That book seemed like a good idea. It had all the things on paper that would make it a book I loved, and then it just was not. It made me angry. <laughs> there are lots of pieces that made me angry about it, so. Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. I'm sorry to those who loved it. <laughs> okay, then we have In Sync. And a book that you hated to say bye 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 to. <laughs> So again, I just picked a book from this year, my favorite book so far. I've had a lot of good reads this year, which I'm really grateful for, but one of the ones that has stuck with my heart is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I did not want to leave The House in the Cerulean Sea. I did not want to leave those characters and that community. Um, I just wanted to live there for a little while, so that was a hard book to say bye to but really good i'm actually reading under the whispering door right now and loving it tj clune has such a way of creating an atmosphere that not necessarily even the plot but just the atmosphere that you want to hang out in like under the whispering door i'm just finding myself i want to hang out in that house every night when i'm reading you know i'm looking forward to that so he has a great writing style that i'm enjoying a lot okay next one is slimed <laughs> I forget the Nickelodeon show this was from, but you know when they got slimed? I remember watching that. Um, so this is a book that everyone loved, but you hated. So I wouldn't necessarily say I hated it. I still gave it three stars, but I wasn't as enthusiastic as it seems like a lot of people are. And this is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I did a full review of this. I'll link that in the description box below. I enjoyed it, but there was a lot I didn't enjoy about it. And I actually don't think I'm going to read the second in the series, and I know a lot of people are huge Red Rising fans, so I don't know. It might have been a timing thing, maybe if I'd read it earlier, closer to when it first came out, but it just didn't hit home for me, so if you want more info on that, check out the full review, but that is my slimed book, a book everyone loved but you hated. Okay. Also, I feel like people secretly loved getting slimed, didn't they? Don't you kind of think it would be fun to get slimed? So, like, it was okay. Three stars was okay. Then we have Oregon Trail. <laughs> Who did not love Oregon Trail? Come on. 
come on, didn't you love Oregon Trail? Such, oh, such memories playing that game. So the book prompt is a book that made you wish you died of dysentery. <laughs> Oh, so this was Death's Daughter by Amber Benson. I did a book rant on this. I can link that down below too. But um, this, <laughs> this is a book by an actress who was in Buffy. I think Buffy was the book, was the um, show that she was in. I can't remember now. But anyways, it's about Calliope Reaper Jones. She's Death's daughter. And she has to kind of like save her family. But she is one of the most annoying characters I have ever met in all of my reading. I just, ugh, I just couldn't, I made it through to the end, but it was rough. I ended up getting so annoyed with her so many times. And I'm definitely not continuing on in that series. So a book that made me want, wish I had died of dysentery was definitely Death's Daughter by Amber Benson. Okay, number seven is a mixtape CD. <laughs> Mixtape CDs. Did you guys have mixtape CDs? I remember so many CDs with my friends' handwritten notes on them. I see a Lifehouse one that my friend gave me. My cousin Ellen used to make all these mixed CDs for me, and I remember learning about new music that way, and it was like a really beautiful way of sharing music. I miss those days. So three books that you recommend to anyone, anywhere, no matter what. This is tough, and this is really tough because I would not just recommend three books to anybody. We are all so different and there are so many different genres and styles of writing and characters and, and it's just an immense reading world. How could I pick three that everybody in the whole world would like? I couldn't. I couldn't do it. How do you do that? If you know, let me know. If it had said like my three favorite books, I mean, that'd still be hard or my three favorite books of all time maybe or if you give me a genre maybe but how do you do this how am I gonna do this so ultimately I decided to just try and like cover as many genres as I could in just three books which is still not many like I was I would have picked Name of the Wind because it's one of my all-time favorites but I know a lot of people don't like it so I didn't put it on my list so anyways I'm just gonna try and we'll see the first one is going to be nonfiction. It's When Things Fall Apart by Pima Chodron. Highly recommend this for anybody who has felt like things are falling apart at any point in their life. This was a life-changing read for me. So When Things Fall Apart by Pima Chodron, I would recommend to anybody because I think pretty much everybody at this point has experienced the sensation of things falling apart and feeling lost. So definitely would recommend that. The second one that I would recommend is Sabriel by Garth Nix. It's just a good, solid fantasy read. It's like one of the best series for just a solid fantasy read, I think. So Sabriel by Garth Nix or start with Abhorsen if you want to read it in the timeline order and not the order that it was written. I actually read Clariel first and then realized it was a series and went back and read all of them. But I found out a new one was or is being released in 2021, which I had no idea. So I'm definitely going to go back and check that. But the Old Kingdom series, I would recommend, I guess, for anybody. <laughs> but yeah, let's go with that. And then the third one is kind of a strange one. But I was trying, again, to think about themes that almost everybody could resonate with. And I picked The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. It's a short story but it's really powerful. It's it's a story about this old man who's struggling to bring this fish back and his battle with the fish and all of this stuff um, that he goes through. And it's just a really powerful, impactful read on what it means to, to struggle, to to be to keep moving forward at what cost and what risk. It's just, it's just a great read. So I would recommend that for everybody. So there, I guess I did it. Three books you recommend to anyone, anywhere, no matter what. There you go. Okay, and then eight, we have dial-up internet. A book that took for freaking ever to read. <laughs> yes, I have a couple. So 
I've been getting way more into sci-fi. I realize like my heart is really open to sci-fi right now. I am loving it. Give me sentient robots, sentient AI, give me space settings, and I am for it. I am all in on sci-fi. And epic sci-fi tends to be really long. <laughs> so Children of Time took me almost two months to read. I was reading other books during that time, but it was just a long read. And I actually found out that I prefer to listen to these epic sci-fis through audio format rather than physically reading. Like right now I'm reading To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. Look at this thing. It's like 800 and something pages. It doesn't look that big right here, but it's a really tiny words, okay? So it's 800 and something pages and it was just going really slow. I got to about page 292 physical form and I decided I would just give the audiobook a shot. Um, my library happened to have it, which was awesome, and I've been going through it much, much more quickly and enjoying it a lot more. So if you've been having a hard time getting into those longer ones, you might want to try doing some physical reading, some audiobooks, but a book that took me for freaking ever to read was Children of Time and To Sleep in a Sea of Stars is proving to be the same, but so far both have been worth the time investment. They just take a long time. Okay, then nine is Kenan Thompson. <laughs> Kenan and Cal, do you guys remember? I love seeing him on SNL now. He is like so funny, just a great character. And so the book prompt is that book you see referenced everywhere and is everything is in everything, but that's okay because it's awesome. So this is actually a new one for me. And this is from Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armitrout. So I just read this and I know it's been around for a while and people talk about it all the time and I was it actually made me more hesitant to pick it up but I finally did and I ended up loving it. So I don't hate seeing it around everywhere. I'm so excited to pick up the second. I have the second right now. So I don't mind seeing it everywhere. It's like, yeah, I get it. I get it now. <laughs> okay, then we have four more. So the next one is Thumbs Up 7-Up. which I actually don't remember playing. I remember playing a lot of games like this in school, but the book prompt is book where you peek just real quick at the ending because you didn't like guessing games. <laughs> oh my God, so many. I'm notorious for skipping ahead to make sure my favorite characters didn't actually die, like when it's implied they died, but you have a feeling they didn't and you wanna make sure before you can keep reading. Um, yeah, so I think most recently I did this with one of the Murderbot Diaries. It was so good. That series is so good, you guys. Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. You have to check it out. So I think most recently I did it with Network Effect, the full-length novel. I'm pretty sure that's the one. Okay, then we have Dunkaroos. <laughs> Love me some Dunkaroos. Anything sugary, frosting. Yes, sign me up. So your ideal bookish snack is the prompt. I don't really eat while I read. I feel like I'm so messy. I'm, I'm mostly I'm doing library books now, so I don't really want to get a bunch of grease or whatever I'm eating on it. So I mostly drink while I'm reading. Coffee, water, wine sometimes. I guess that would be my favorite bookish snack. <laughs> and then we have 12 scary stories to tell in the dark. Oh my gosh, I still think I have a copy of my scary stories to tell in the dark. I think it's probably in storage, but I love these. I'd bring them to sleepovers. We'd read the stories to each other. So I might even memorize and share them. I love telling scary stories at sleepovers. So this prompt is a book that kept you up all night. And I would have to say No Exit by Taylor Adams. Absolutely, especially the door jam scene. Oh, that still keeps me up at night if I think about it. So, oh, so descriptive and so awful. I don't know why that one stuck with me, but this was fast paced. So that was one reason that it kept me up because I wanted to keep reading it. And also the imagery was so strong that it kept me up. And then our final one is Bill Nye the Science Guy. Who doesn't love a little Bill Nye? And the book prompt is a book that taught you something new. So I'm definitely gonna go with Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. This is a nonfiction that I recently read. I'm gonna share more about it in my recent reads video, but 
This is basically the, about the power of our dreams and sleep and what, why we actually sleep. But going beyond like, yes, sleep is good for us and we know that it's good for us. Like what is it doing on a brain chemistry level and how is it supporting our day-to-day -day function? And why did we genetically adjust to dreaming and uh, what's it doing? It's so interesting, you guys. It's so interesting. So I'll share more about that. But that is a book that definitely taught me something new. I've totally shifted my priorities priorities around sleep and it's been making the biggest difference after reading that book. Okay, so that's my 90s kid book tag answers. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below if you're a 90s kid too. If you're not, still say hi and hopefully I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.